Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to have a look at creating a pivot table after using the Power Query Editor and also using Power Pivot. So what I have here is some raw data with lots of gaps and blank spaces, which I need to get rid of. And I'm going to get rid of that using the Power Query Editor. So to activate the editor, you need to go to the Data tab and then you've got this option from table range. So I'll click on that one. It should load up the um, editor. And then I will be able to get rid of all the blank rows. So the amount column is where I need to go. Because if there's no amount, there's no sale. Take the tick off, no. Click OK. Everything else is okay. There are still some nulls over here, but I'm not too fussed about that. Now I can just load this back into Excel. And I'll call that clean data for now. And then I can format this. I'll format these columns to pounds. I've added the pounds format up there. Same with the date. Just change that to a date. You don't have to do this, but I like to look at that. Now I want to use this table in the Power Query window. So on the Power Query tab, you select Add to Data Model. So click in Add to Data Model. This should load up the Power Query window, which it does. Now from this window, I can bring in a pivot table. So pivot table. New worksheet, OK, and there's my pivot table, and here is the information that I need. So let's go for course, a list of courses by amount. And I also want cost of delivery, like that. Now, if I go back to the Power Pivot window, I can create a formula in there that will automatically tell me what the profit is. I'm going to create a measure, new measure, and I'll call it gross profit. And then what I want it to be is I want it to be uh, sum of amount minus cost of delivery. So if I type sum, sum of amount comes up there minus and then sum again sum of cost of delivery and it's going to be a currency field that's what i want it to be okay to that it just drops it in there and then you can sort that if you want like so so there's several ways of doing that but that's how i want to do it to show you that you can do it in the power pivot window amongst many many other things could then do kpis and things like that but let me just go back to the source data and let's start changing some of these so if i start adding some really silly figures in here so the the 20 20 figures change not that bad now all you have to do is come back to your clean data refresh that there's the figures and your pivot data. I'll just name this pivot. That should refresh when you click on refresh, which it did. So the source data, as you can see, I've got in this file, but that could be anywhere. Um, the clean data is in this file and then the pivot data is whatever you want it to be. Now I've shown you how to do that in the Power Pivot window, just a quick recap of the normal pivot table and how you can do calculations in that. So on this front screen, I have a pivot table, which is looking at this raw data here. And there's several slices there that you can utilize as filters. And the graph you can see is reflecting depending on what filter I select, first quarter and so on, years there, and then the timeline would allow you to do a rolling 
filter like so and then the graph is reacting to that as you can see now I saw an example of something similar to that in Power BI but here you go there's a standard pivot table how you do that now if I close that down and get rid of each of these and just recreate them for you very quickly so you can see how it all works and how simple it is just get rid of that like so now if I yeah I'll do it on the um, I'll delete this this sheet altogether delete so I'm sitting in the data insert pivot table picks up the range normally I would name that so if the range grows um, it doesn't matter the name picks up the the whole column uh, I want it in a new worksheet okay now whatever you want to analyze you put into the values I want sales um, by location so that'll give me that and the filter at the top I want salesperson and quarter you don't have to do that because you can use the slices which I'll put on in a minute I want the the sum of sales to be formatted to currency so number format accounting okay to that okay to that so that's a straightforward pivot table now to put those slices on and the timeline you do need a date field for the timeline but um, I'll do the slices first off so quarter and salesperson because that's the filters that I want you then need to position these next to your data back into the pivot table and the timeline insert timeline date tick okay then you position the timeline that's not going to grow anymore So we can just position this wherever we need it to sit like that and then the last thing that was on that first screen was a pivot chart so pivot chart that'll do and then you position that normally that'd be on a separate sheet now notice that on the pivot chart you do have the filter option so if you did put this on a separate sheet you've still got these filter options and the only reason that they sit there is because i've put them here so if they sit in the filter box, you will get them on the graph. If you just rely on the slices, you won't get them on the graph. So that's basically how I did that first screen. And you can use this filter and make sure when you do a filter that you take that off. Now, if I go on to the practice one, here's another one. List of courses by cost and I want lo locations as well. I'm not interested in the people so insert pivot table existing worksheet this time so I want this to sit in F1 okay and then you get the same sort of thing so this time it's going to be course a list of courses and I'm putting courses in there as well so it'll count them and then cost next to that and then again I'm going to click on that one value field settings number format accounting okay okay again sits like so and then location can go in filter and that drops it down now you can use groups now if i go back onto sheet one i didn't add any dates but if i did add the date let me just do that it's going to make this look a bit grim so if i get rid of some of this you can see all the dates coming up there now I've already, if I right click on these, I've already selected some grouping options. But if I just knock these off and put it to years just, and then OK to that, and then I can just move that into the top option, which gives me a year filter. That's the start and the end date. I should have got rid of those two. So 2016, for example, will be a filter and you could put a slicer on for that which is what i had initially i think if i just go back and put that on insert slicer um let's go for date yeah it's the same because i've now grouped the dates 
um, you you can create a slicer that will allow you to do stuff like that. So you can do that with dates, and it's going to give you the options. But on this one, when I right click, there is no, there's going to be nothing there. I have to create the groups manually. So to do that, I want to group this table into Microsoft Office and non Microsoft Office. Now to do that, you need to move things around a little bit because Physio, for example, is not part of Microsoft Office. So I just click on that and move it down. Likewise with projects, notice I'm not highlighting the whole line, even though when I first click on it, it does. That's the symbol I need. Push that down. So those two now are separate. I can highlight the top five Microsoft Office courses, right click and then group. And then everything else that's left becomes a group of itself, but I want these two to be a group. So I'll highlight these two, right click, group, and then you've got group two, group one. And if I just type over the top of group one, MSO, and then non MSO underneath for that one. And then if you click that down, you should get a summary like so. And if I double click that figure, it just pulls those off and drops them onto a separate sheet. They're just the Microsoft Office courses, even though I created that group. And I could do the same with that one. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to move that open and leave it like so. Formatting it, design, all these color schemes you can use. Pick that one. Now, formulas. So in the previous session, we looked at um, formulas. This time, I want to look at doing formulas, not in Power Pivot, but in just the normal pivot table. And you do that by going to analyze and then this one calculated field so the first one's going to be profit and we're going to say it's going to be cost times 1.1 not profit let's change that that's not profit let's change that to markup Let's say our markup. We'll do the profit next. So the markup is going to be 1.1. Click OK to that. And it comes in as sum of markup. You can change that just to say markup. But you need to have a space after it because you can't use the same word as the column. Likewise, that can't be cost, but it can be costs. That can be courses, not course. That can be products, like so. Now, to do the profit, it would be um markup minus cost so go back into there calculated field double click on markup minus costs and this will be profit so it's quite straightforward and it's probably the best way to do the calculations if you're just using a straightforward pivot table and then that can be profit with a space after it and that will then react to any figures that change in this data so if i put thirty thousand in there and then refresh this data, refresh, the profit went up from 5,000 to 8,000, and that's what you want to happen. If you do the formulas outside of the pivot table, you are letting yourself, well, you're opening yourself up to potential errors. I'll just show you if I try and do the same thing. So if I go um, equals that, look at the formula already, times 1.1, which is the same formula, you get the same answer. If I pull that down, it's the same answer all the way down because I would have to change the label. That's looking at course two. So all this label, these labels are slightly different. And if you have a filter on, it's going to knock it off. So th this is not the right way to do it. Although you can, if you absolutely must. Now, if I go on to a different um, example, calculations, there is a feature called calculated field. That was a calculated item. If I just go and show you this one, calculated field, that's what we just did. Calculated field, we just did. Calculated item is what I want to show you. So calculated item, I've got BMW bonus. So I've called it that and it's just BMW. So it's the product the item rather than the, the figures. So to do that, I'll do it for Ford. 
So calculated, uh, look, notice where I'm clicked in this column, calculated item, I'll call it Ford bonus, and it will be Ford times 1.1 now let's not do it 1.1 yeah 1.1 times 1.1 click OK to that and then Ford bonus comes in at the top which you'd need to push it underneath Ford BMW should really be underneath BMW and Ford bonus is massive come back to that so that's the calculated fields and next example is for an external example you can't this is an access database so you can bring fields in from an external data source you don't have to use power pivot to do that you don't have to use a query editor either you can just do it like this so you just start off you go insert pivot table and this time it says use external data source you may have to choose a connection, choose connection. If the connection that you want isn't listed, you'll have to browse for it. So I want an access database. So I'm going up to examples, access 2018, and this is the one I want. And then I click OK, and it should bring the fields back in. And then it's a case of populating, a case of populating the pivot table like you're used to doing so this one I can go salary salary sum of salary um, I can put department across across the top or surname across the top it doesn't really matter don't like that so I'm not doing that surname as a filter but the point of this is that this is an access database if the data changes in access you would just refresh this as you would normally do and then it will bring that information back through. So that's quite a comprehensive look at pivot tables. So we first off looked at the power pivot and cleaning data with the query editor. Then we've gone back right back to the beginning and looking at doing calculations and linking data to an external source. Now in a previous session I've talked about relationships because you can create relationships and that is where the power pivot window does come into its own uh, because in there you have uh, the ability to detect relationships but you also have the ability to create relationships yourself this little icon there you can actually manually create a relationship and then create a table through that and this example is an example of one so i've got three separate tables where i've created relationships and then you've got a pivot table where you can see that each of these tables come in. So there's already a, a session on this, so I'm not going to go over it now. But that's the end of today's session. Hope you've enjoyed that, and thank you for your time.